Hello, uh, welcome to the second session of our videos. Today we're going to have a um, quick but thorough explanation of what makes it a special presentation of technology products background um, and a little bit the history that we have behind that has uh, developed in the company that we're today. We have um, Abit in Coventry today as well, and we have a uh, Jamison in Miami looking good after some time in Puerto Rico. And we're gonna jump now with Jamison explaining um, a little bit um, the technology, okay? Which is the first part of the introduction to um, Etzer products portfolio. Uh, okay, so the one of the things that makes uh, Edser different and special uh, is that uh, we were one of the early um, uh, adapters of uh, 3D scanning technology, uh, as well as pressure plate pressure plate technology. Um, we began uh, more than 10 years ago, first using uh, two-dimensional light scanners, uh, which were manufactured in-house and developed in-house by Edser Labs. Um, after that time, shortly after that time, we started also incorporating um, pressure analysis using uh, the Edser plate, um, which gave our clients um, first with the light scanning technology, the ability to uh, digitize and submit the scans of their patient's anatomy uh, in real time so that they had decreased shipping costs and decreased turnaround time. So they had uh, improved uh, patient satisfaction and results. Uh, and after that, adding the um, the Edser plate uh, as an option for our clients to add a component of biomechanical analysis um, to see dynamic and static pressure mapping uh, at the time of analysis of the patients and also for follow-up so that we could see the changes in um, force distribution uh, and pressures once the patient was given the treatment and had the insoles under their feet on the, the pressure plate again. Uh, so this gave a, a big advantage to the clients in the ability to capture more information for a better end product as well as um, follow-up examination and patient education. Um, to show them exactly what the insoles were doing for them. Yeah, so so for weight bearing scans, um, we're now offering uh, the first offering is uh, the Paw Scan 3D, which is uh, a 3D red laser scanner, um, which also includes uh, a laser alignment tool, um, so that you can see hind foot alignment as well as a camera built into it, so you can get pictures uh, from the hind foot. Um, as you can see on the right hand side of it, that's focusing in right now on where the laser and camera comes from. Um, you can also do, uh, for non weight bearing or semi weight bearing that the clinician can put pressure into it, uh, on, on the rolling rack that you just saw, or you have the, um, the platform on either side of it so that they can put their non scanning foot next to it and balance themselves. Um, and the other option that is being used for clients that are not using the 3D weight bearing scanner um, is the iPad, uh, structure iPad scanner, um, which again is uh, a higher level of accuracy than we were previously able to achieve. It's a lower cost point uh, and it's incredibly easy to use and mobile. So clinicians that are either in a hospital setting or in an office where they want to go room to room and not have to bring the patient into one room, um, as well as clinicians moving between offices or doing home visits. Uh, this has been a great solution for them uh, and, and helped Edser a lot in being able to attain those clients. Yes. Instead of asking them to lug around uh, one of the heavy weight bearing scanners. Yes. And just for the benefit of the audience, because they, they may not be able to quite make that out. So this is uh, an, an extra camera attachment that you add on to uh, your yeah, existing yeah. iPad. Yeah, so you may be just be able to just make out there's this kind of a, a tab at the bottom, at the top of the iPad here. Uh, and that is where the camera itself is housed and the, the, the sort of 3D uh, technologies 
within that added in with a with a simple app software uh, that you can download uh, from EDSA uh, for free. And that plus that together gives you some absolutely awesome um, 3D scanning power. Uh, I, just to I, let everybody know, I've been using this for a little while and I've been absolutely amazed at the uh, the quality and the, and the accuracy. Really, what what what's the accuracy up to there, guys? Do you know how accurate? Uh, precision to 0.5 millimeters. Yes. 0.5 millimeters. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty it cool, al yeah. it also allows you to scan AFOs, and um, one thing that. Abid has in his its own clinic, and in my opinion, sometimes if you think budget, even budget-wise, can be a really, really winner combo because, uh, and I am going to share it again here on the screen. Um, it's this here, okay, from TechMed, okay. So you have um, in, instead of purchasing, for example, that can be a more expensive scanner, which is the 3D Pow, you have the, the capability of having an iPad. And a portable also because it's only two, two kilos. Um, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a platform where you can scan AFOs and you can scan in full weight bearing. So if you think about it, the full investment, so you can scan in off weight bearing, full weight bearing, semi weight bearing, is um, the, the idea of having the iPad plus the platform um, from TechMed affordable and, and in my opinion, a winner proposal because you have portability and accuracy both at the same time. Yeah, so this is a, a, a glass plate um, on, on a stand. So the, 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 the patient's foot is placed sort of centrally here, and then it's a lot easier for the clinician to use the iPad and get around to do a, a real 3D scan. Uh, and also that means that it's a sort of semi-weight bearing, which is ever so useful. Uh, so loads of different ways to, to use that iPad scanner. I've been using that for probably two two years now, maybe. And previous to that, I had um, red laser scanners, and I can tell you there's there's a massive difference because from what I know, the the scanning technology is kind of two D scan with an algorithm built into it that helps to translate it to a three dimensional one. Whereas this um, iPad scanner is truly three D. Is that right, guys? Yes. yes. True three D um, scanning from that. Uh, which gives you a lot greater control and accuracy over your prescriptions, whether or not that's for a AFO or a flophotic or, or an orthotic. Uh, it's definitely the, the the most modern and up to date way of scanning. Would you say? I mean, bear in mind, what, you know, the old days, um, these um, impressions were taken with uh, plaster of Paris molds, uh, which would take uh, a long time. You know, take 20, 30 minutes at least. Real messy. You know, you used to get mess all over the plaster all over the clinician. The shoes, the floor, the patient. Uh, so it take a lot of time to, to set it up, a lot of time to clean down afterwards. And the difference now with the with the 3D scanning technology, just for everybody's awareness, is that um, we can achieve the same results, if not better and more accurate, uh, with more repeatability uh, and greater confidence. And you can do the same same job in, I would say, about 30 seconds, if not quicker sometimes. Yeah. As Jameson said, you know, it's so simple to use in your clinic. Also, uh, it's fully portable. So if you have multiple clinics at multiple places where you need to be, uh, you don't have to worry about carrying your bulky equipment. It's like, like uh, some some guys may have a, I don't know, a fancy uh, a clinic in Harley Street and then another one in Leicester and another one in Nottingham. So some people are quite transient with their work. And so this makes that very, very simple and easy. You don't have to worry about taking messy casts and molds. I know a lot of, lot of, lot of the clinicians out there still still do that. Um, thinking that's still the superior way, and if you do uh, mm -hmm. find that that's still the way forward, you, you can also scan your casts and your molds. So if you prefer to take a box cast, and yeah. that's the way to do it, then you carry on. But the that'll still, that'll still save you two or three days, yeah. typically on turnaround yeah. time. No, yeah. Nowadays, if you want to spend money on Royal Mail or UPS sending something, is because you want to, because yeah. you can easily save. The hassle, the things get lost. You, you you can scan your cars. You can scan phone boxes. It's it's way 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 better. So I reckon at least ninety percent of the clinicians' work, if not more, can be done really easily with the, with the scanner. Uh, I think there's still occasions where you're still going to find a, a real complicated foot. Uh, uh, you know, maybe a post-surgical foot or pre-surgical, and sometimes maybe you still need to. Uh, Take a, a, or you feel more confident that if you take a mold or a cast, you'll get a more accurate device. But again, you can still 
do it that way and then scan that in uh, yourself or send it to the lab and and uh, 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 Victor and the guys will scan that into the system for you. Yeah. Also, it's really, really rare that you need to have uh, the old school uh, vacuum formed uh, orthotic type uh, devices uh, because the answer uh, accuracy is, is, is definitely there. And there's a f few labs coming on board now. There's more and more labs coming this way with the technology, but I think I still find uh, quite a few of the local ones are using um, some kind of laser technology. They are playing around with the... Uh, uh, with the iPad uh, scanners and stuff, but they still have difficulty uh, implementing it into their existing systems. Where Ed has been doing this now very, very successfully for what five, five years, four to five years maybe, or three, three, four years. I've been like the 3D printed technology, where we are, um, um, which is the revolutionary, you know, in one, you know, like 3D printed technology. We were definitely the first ones doing certain type of product with finishing with top covers. Etc. Using Fit 360, which is, in my opinion, the first the best software for 3D printing. I have sometimes like more and pe more and more people are coming, but experience is an asset because um, you always have to discover some things they don't work and other things they don't work, and nobody's gonna explain you that. Okay, it comes with knowledge of thousands of thousands of designs in different countries: Israel, US, Spain, the UK, Ireland. And when you go to two, three years covering all those different queries, sometimes complications, the things that you don't know, that's really an asset because people that are starting now, they're going to have to go through everything we've done before. So that give us three, four years of CAD CAM technology and knowledge where we can develop products way, way before them, knowing all the issues that you have when you start okay so th this is this is quite important and how long how long have, have edson been in the um 3d printed market because of course you guys have got some of the biggest and best uh, 3d printers around yeah we're still um in our infancy here in a, in a lot of ways in the uk uh you guys have been doing this for, for quite a while so talk us through that how, how did that all begin how did you get into the 3d printing and then uh, how, how did you get to uh, you know big companies like HP to, to, to help you along the way? So the 3D printing, I would say, started initially more than five years ago with um, simple SLS printers that we were testing uh, in the factory. But um, the insoles weren't proving to be um, durable enough. Um, issues with, with cracking and, and uh, pr poor re reproducibility. Um, so we didn't really launch uh, full scale until uh, jumping on board with the, with the HP printers in, I would say 2018 was that was when that happened, maybe 2017. Um, so we've had our line of 3D printed insoles um, for at least three years, and it's been a, a big part of our total volume. Um, in the US, it's easily more than 50% of the total volume. Uh, and then we've had the line of AFOs for over two years already. Um, yeah. it's, it's 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 a future. It's where all the investment is really, you know. Like, uh, and I know um, it's not something that I can give much details, you know. But we're gonna get into all plenty of new lines of all other types of three D printing technology. Once again, this is the thing. Once you have master in the certain areas you can jump to the next step okay um we we pride ourselves in that you know like in what makes us different is that we we want to at least we want to believe that we are always the breakthrough uh technology or totic lab that is going to give you the, the most innovative also at an affordable cost because that's that's important as well um we have the advantage of economy of volume um, many, many labs that they offer 3D printing, they don't print themselves mm -hmm. because they don't have neither the capability or the economy or the cash flow to be able to afford 3D printing technology. So they outsource it. Now, outsourcing 3D printing is never the same as manufacturing yourself. You will never get the same access uh, um, to uh, and response in order to amend prescriptions. Everything is more complicated. You know, like now it, this is. The certain type of 3D printing that is not for small labs because it just um, the it, or, or or it will cost 300 pounds your topic to the clinician. 
how can you make money with that? You can. You know. So um, that that that's that's a good point, I suppose, for anybody who's looking out yeah. there for for a lab to to supply their orthotics to them. There's there's a lot of outsourcing going on there. You know, for those guys that can't yeah. afford, a, you know, that don't yeah. have a multi national uh, lab uh, available to them yeah. uh, people don't know that sometimes a lab will take the, the prescription for them because they don't have the equipment or the facilities they'll outsource it to another lab uh, yeah. and have them made somewhere else right so yeah yeah uh, in fact we're going to look at uh, orthotics uh, foot orthotics yeah. particularly yeah we're going to do a uh, look at the uh, flopthotic range so this is uh, sandals and e-flops and flopthotics which are uh, Going to be very very uh, useful uh, for the summertime uh, footbeds which you can put into um, what naot style sandals we'll maybe yes. cover that for guys yeah. also more important uh, just as important is uh, the the afo range that you guys uh, do a 3d print of too in edster in the in the factory we uh early on after the first few years i imagine we developed kind of uh three basic um lines or shapes of orthotics so if you look at the picture and the outlines around the foot we have your versatility which is uh, for a casual type shoe or a standard shoe last a standard width um, then if you have somebody that's in a more sport shoe or has a wide foot um, you can bump that up to performance and that's going to make the entirety of the insole a little bit wider to fit better in the footbed of the shoe and capture the patient's foot uh, and then if they're in more of a dress shoe uh, women's flat perhaps a heel uh, or men's loafer, you're going to want to go to um, more of the fashion or moda grind, which is going to make it a little bit narrower so that it's going to fit into those shoes. Um, again, so your dress line, a lot of our clients are using um, for these types of insoles more of the carbon fiber and graphite options, um, including silver composite, graphite, or blue carbon fiber, uh, a lower heel cup, uh, again, it's going to have a narrower grind or width to the orthotic. And you have options of full length, sulcus length, which is going to go to the first fold of the toes, uh, or metatarsal length, which is going to stop right behind the metatarsal heads. So depending on what shoe style um, the patient is wearing and uh, what their tolerance is going to be for, for their toes uh, fitting into the shoe um, and what modifications you might need in the forefoot, you can vary the length of the insole to be a little bit more accommodating for the patient. Can uh, I yeah. give you something just yeah. quick, Emerson? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, I think, for example, every market has its favorite shell materials. I think um, in, in the US, carbon fiber is popular, but not so much as in the UK. Now, sometimes because we have all this 3D mania, passion, okay, um, we forget that uh, I think Etsy is, I have seen it's the only lab that has silver, graphite, blue carbon, three types of carbon fiber for carbon fiber lovers in different densities. Um, and uh, in the UK, where carbon fiber is very, very appealing and very, very popular, you're not going to find in any other lab three pure line of carbon fibers in three different rigidities. Um, one thing to bear in mind, of course, is that, as you say, it's more for a dress line, among other things, because the most, the deeper heel cap you can have with um, carbon fiber device is 17. So UCBLs, things like this, not possible. It's only with polypropylene EVA or uh, 3D print. Now, Jameson, sorry. <laughs> just, uh, on, top, on top of that, uh, the reasoning for that, just because we always get asked, is yeah. that the carbon fiber tends to wrinkle uh, yes. in their in the bottom of the heel cup when you bring the heel cup too high and therefore the wall too vertical. Um, so it's something that can be a uh, negative for the patient um, as well as for the ability to, to line the orthotic and, and have a, a beautiful looking device. Um, but also on top of that, the, the carbon fibers, as, as I mentioned, as Victor followed up on, uh, are used largely for dress orthotics by many of our clients uh, and historically, traditionally are used that way because they're thin. That being said, with the addition of 3D printing three, four years ago, um, we're able to modify the shells. We don't just have three millimeter, four millimeter, five millimeter of polypropylene. We can make the shell two millimeters, 2.5 millimeters, and then add medial arch reinforcements 
lateral arch reinforcements. Um, so we're able to keep the shell thinner so that it's going to fit well into the shoe while still having uh, the support that's required and the rigidity required to keep the patient's foot in the treatment position. All right. I'm showing something here. Maybe you see. All right. Yep. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's it. So that's you something that we do. That, that's, those are modifications that we weren't able to do before that we're now using uh, with 3D printing. And I'm sure Victor finds similar to me that the the tolerance of the patient um, to to the treatment is is much higher a lot of times yes. with the, with a 3D printed device, even in the past with a polypropylene device than the carbon fibers because they can be quite rigid uh, and and difficult yep. for the patient to to adapt to. So it's a uh, it's a much better pre treatment protocol a lot of times with the 3D printed, and now we can fit them better into the shoes. We don't have that issue. It's it's a beautiful material because. It's strong, but at the same time, it's so light. Yep. And um, it's um, it, the first time a clinician sees a 3D printed device and they touch it and they see how light it is, but it tells how, how strong it's It's the reason why 3D printing is so popular, you know? Yep. Um, and for those clinicians out there, um, you know, that, that is a scary shoe. That's a scary looking shoe for a lot of people. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of patient a lot of people don't want to come in to their practice and to have to make orthotics for. It's tricky. It's tricky. It's fiddly. But uh, I have to say, with, with, with the EDSA um, technology and what they have available, it's a lot easier than, than it ever used to be. Yeah. So you, you no longer need to think about turning these guys away as soon as they rock up into your practice. You, you can deal with this. And, and, and sure, in future, uh, we are going to be putting um, videos together, educational videos, uh, and we're going to be up, back on doing live training as soon as we can post the, the lockdown uh, so you know we're going to help clinicians uh, to learn a, a lot more about how to prescribe accurately and comfortably uh, for this type of style of shoe uh, as I say, it's made a lot more much much easier with the, with the technology available to us and, and, and the range of materials that EDSA has as Victor has mentioned uh, second to none really you, you can't get that that variety uh, anywhere else that I've seen so far yep uh, let's go down to the next slide Oh, so surprise for the uh, for the dress line, we also offer extra narrow. That's going to be your heel specifically, uh, flex heel, which we removed uh, the shell uh, under the patient's calcaneus, so that it's just top and bottom co bottom cover, and it can flex, which fits well in some flats, but is more designed for a heel to take the shape of the shoe. Uh, and Cobra, of course, which I'm sure most of the clinicians have seen. Um, which again is is uh, better fit for the the heels of the shoe. Um, so those are just other options that you can get when you start getting uh, some of those cases that Abid said don't look so exciting for our clinicians when the patient comes in and asks. But uh, when we know they're not going to wear anything else, we try to do the best that we can to accommodate. Yeah, you know, you know it's highly highly satisfying when you get that orthotic right. It just fits. The patient's got their foot in the the, the chosen style of shoe, and it's just doing the job. Uh, most people probably know about the extra narrow, um, that those that have been prescribed for a while. And, pro and the Cobra is quite well known. That's that's old school stuff. But the yep. Flex Seal particularly is really interesting. That's a, you know, a, a more modern twist on things. And, and that really, really helps um, get the fit just beautifully right. All right, shall I squeeze the, on? The other, the other alternative line from the base is, uh, is our sport or performance line. You can go back down. Uh, sure. So that yeah. one's that one's going to be again slightly wider than uh, the grind or the last of your normal shoe size, so that it can fill uh, you know a, a wide toe boot, uh, a running sneaker with a wide toe box. If you know that your patient is wearing a wide, you can go up from a versatility um, to this one, or tell us that it's you know plus five millimeters or a wide shoe. Um, you're going to get your deeper heel cup in the standard. Typically, you're going to have an extrinsic post. Um, which now, of course, we can do an EVA on the carbon fiber or polypropylene orthotics with 3D printed. We can do it in shell. Typically, we're using tripod posting now, which can be varus or valgus, and that uh, uses less material, making the insole lighter um, and less pressure on the patient's heel. Um, and then you're, I think I already said you're also going to have a deeper heel cup. Uh, and again, that comes with the variety of, of um, 
of shell materials as well as uh, as well as EVA in multiple densities. So that's going to be for your your sports or your wider shoes. So for those guys that are feeling a bit bit confused right now, there's a lot of a lot of detail there uh, from Jameson about material science, particularly. I think Jameson maybe um, you know we we don't know as much of, of that as as we ought to sometimes. But again, just to highlight that we're we're going to come through with training for people uh, to get them up to speed with all these different types of materials and different uses for different conditions. It's, it's a lot to understand and take in, but we're going to simplify it all for you. Yeah, I think yeah. we'll we'll look at the the versatility line also quickly, um, and then probably briefly look over flop thotics and e flops, which I think Victor and Abid are going to take you through more training on sure. um, in a later uh, session. And we'll look at the AFOs and I'll show you quickly uh, about the modifications and accommodations and stuff like that, that we'll go through in detail at a later time. Yeah. So the casual line, um, again, it's, it's going to be the true grind or width of the foot um, for each shoe size. Um, so if your patient is wearing uh, a standard casual shoe lace up with an insole that's removable, um, not a dress shoe or a wide shoe and doesn't have a wide foot, then this is typically going to be your choice. It comes with a 12 millimeter heel cup standard. Um, client's choice really, if they want uh, extrinsic posting or, or intrinsic or no posting. Um, and of course, all the uh, typical materials for top or bottom cover um, and all the shell materials are available in this grind as well. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. that's a, what, what do you think that's the most common time of prescription you do or maybe not so much these days no it's the most common if you're if uh, you're unsure if the patient's foot is wide or not um, if they don't tell you that they have a wide shoe um, if you don't know whether or not you want a deep heel, heel cup or a shallow heel cup um, this is kind of the most standard that's going to fit in the most shoes um, while still giving the most control for the patient um, this is kind of your, your baseline that you're moving off of if you have other details that you need to worry about. Okay. Let, let me ask you a little question there for me, Jameson, yep. which, which device do, or style of device do you think would work best in a sketcher shoe? Sketches, right? They're really, really popular over here in the UK. Everybody and anybody's wearing sketches at the moment. They're, they've been popular for probably the last decade now, nearly. Uh, but they don't seem to be waning in popularity. They just seem to be getting more and more useful. So some of them, I don't know how much experience you got. Some of them have a removal in soles. Some of them don't. Uh, yep. Some you can, you know, they, they they kind of accommodate. Some some of them won't. So where would you go? Anything obvious, or do you just take it on a case by case basis? It's, honestly, it's a little bit of a case by case basis in in the U.S. market. Um, Sketchers are being uh, like New Balance are being worn a little bit more by people that might have foot issues, um, or elderly people. Um, yeah. and so the elderly people, I find that it's typically, uh, uh, the wider style, um, that they're trying to give them a better base of support. So performance is going to work in those a lot of times, Yeah. Uh, but there's also a style that has the memory foam in the bottom of them. Yes. That has yeah. a glue that sticks in pretty well, but also is pretty nicely removable without tearing the insole or the bottom of the shoe apart. Um, yeah. and the last on those is typically a bit more narrow. So yeah. those you'd, you'd want a versatility. So it's, you really have to kind of look inside the shoe and see what you're dealing with. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yep. Cool. Okay. Let's move on to your, uh, next version. This is for diabetics. Now this is a huge, huge market, uh, in every country in the world, I suppose, uh, diabetic provision of, of, of all uh, yes. these help to um, the diabetic line is, uh, it's typically going to be an EVA insole, um, and it's diabetic slash accommodative. You can use a softer EVA, um, looking for a little bit more comfort and cushion. Um, that being said, the, the Edser manufacturer of a diabetic insole, we do not do diabetic three packs that are common, uh, in the U S and sure about UK. Uh, we make a structural supportive diabetic or accommodative insole. Um, that, uh, typically for diabetic, you're going to use, um, a plastizote or a EVA pour on top cover, which you see pictured the blue being EVA pour on and the beige being plastizote. Um, the benefits of the pour on is that it's going to have a little bit more rebound. 
uh, and last quite a bit longer uh, than the plast is out. Yeah, it, it, we in fact, we, push our, our clients towards that. Yeah, we, we tend to put people away from plastics out because the comeback of the devices is all the time, you know, like they'll, because they just get damaged very quickly. And this is one of the good things from, from Ether as well. So, for example, in terms of cushioning top covers, we have PPT microfiber that can be used as well, beautiful material. Um, we have EBA poron in two and three. We have neoprene in 1.5 and 3, where we have it, um, because it's a very, very demanding and outsourced neoprene, and you know it's um, it's hard to get sometimes over all over the world. And we have EBA latex 2 and 3 in green and in black. EBA latex, in my opinion, a beautiful, great top cover because it's a cushioning top cover that adapts to very deep heel caps. Now this is very unique. It's not doesn't happen very often. Okay, that shows you that the people in Spain are always researching different materials to achieve best results with our orthotic devices okay like for, uh, it's not common to have nine or ten different top covers of cushioning in different densities to achieve a side of plastazote to achieve best results and durability with your devices hmm. and we give customers beautiful booklets like this so patients uh, can choose within what they need what they want most uh, and one, one more important thing about the diabetic, because I get surprised because people ask us all the time after working with us for months or years, uh, we absolutely do toe fillers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, those guys with, with amputations and stuff, uh, digital amputations, they're losing the, the third rocker. Uh, yeah. In another program, we probably need to go over that in a, in a lot of detail. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that's great uh, that you do the toe fillers too. So how, how would people go, go about getting the toe filler? What's it, uh, just a simple addition on a prescription or do you need more detail than that? Yeah, in our uh, in our prescription <laughs> form, there's a comments section on the bottom for anything that's not in the standard order form, um, which some things we don't put there because they require words as opposed to uh, checking off boxes or putting numbers. Sure. And this is something where, where we prefer that. Um, also, the comments are there in case people can't find anything or they need to tell us uh, anything else about the orthotic for our technicians and our staff to help um, with them. But uh, you would write in the comments that um, the patient has uh, uh, amputation of the hallux and you need a toe filler or they're missing second and third digits or midfoot amputation or, or whatever it is. And of course, we can see that in the scan and take the measurements as well. Um, but it's up to the clinician to let us know which uh, uh, filler or accommodation that they're looking for. Awesome stuff. Yep. Diabetic is um, really, uh, what, what do you think, uh, James? So how much work does the diabetic market, uh, uh, market make up um, in your kind of uh, US workload? Uh, it- as I mentioned, we're not using, uh, we're not doing the diabetic three packs, so we don't really have internal uh, numbers about it, but it's it's massive. It's a massive market. Um, we get some of our clients that are just doing the other insoles with us and know that we make the diabetic insoles, um, and and some that come to us for the quality of our EVA insoles. But there's a huge alternative market in the U.S. for the diabetic three packs because it's what Medicare is is paying for um, and what a lot of people are used to, uh, and, and it's it's a huge percentage of the population. Can you just clarify for us what is the diabetic three pack? The, those are uh, more true plastazote insoles. They're designed so that you can get three pairs a year. Um, so they're uh-huh. designed to be a bit more accommodative, but they break down a bit more quickly. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So that's why patients get multiple pairs per year, um, and and we they're lower cost, and we don't design those types of in, or manufacture those types of insoles. Yeah, yeah. They're not. They're generally. I, w- I would call that. Um, an accommodative device, not not a corrective device. Yeah. yeah, and like I said, our diabetic are, for comparison in our line, relatively accommodative, but they're, yeah. they're still more corrective. And they've got that stru- more structural integrity to, them to, to maybe try and correct deformity rather than just accommodate it as it is. Absolutely. Very cool, very cool. Thank you for clarifying that. No problem. Okay, so I'll flip the, the, the screen there. Now we're on to the, the children's range of devices. Of course, I, I see loads and loads of children uh, from the ages of probably five and upwards, sometimes earlier, um, and they too 
are in need of uh, orthotics a lot of the time for all sorts of conditions. So please talk us through your, your, your range there, Jameson. Um, so we have our UCBL and our gate plates. The UCBL is um, going to come, the, the clinician pr can prescribe, but the standard is 22 to 25 millimeters for a deep heel cup. And it's also going to have medial and lateral phalanges. You can specify whether you want medial or lateral or both uh, in our order form. Uh, a lot of the clients order, as you see, in metatarsal length for this population, um, probably largely because the patients are younger and growing. So a full length device uh, they might grow out of in terms of the shoe size more quickly, but we do also offer it in three quarter or sulcus length and, and a full length device. As Victor touched on earlier, the, this product is not available in uh, any of the carbon fibers um, because it'll, it'll wrinkle in the heel. Um, so it's available only in 3D printed or polypropylene. And it also uh, cannot... Uh, we can't accommodate the depth of the heel cup and the high walls mm -hmm. of that or the flanges with many of our top covers. So the top covers are mostly limited to our perforated EVAs, uh, marble EVAs, um, EVA porons, and EVA latexes. So you're going to want to stick to those. Which are be wearing carbon fiber anyway. Also, Agreed. the last part of the product, the impact, uh, you are, you're, just, you're asking for a break. And we offer a lifetime guarantee um, uh, because, in, in my case, I am really, really thorough. But if I see 10 years old carbon fiber, uh, 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 change to polypropylene 3D print. It's, it's part of the validation work that we do. Not only because it's the wrong shell, it's because you're asking for a very short span life for that kind of shell, for that kind of patient. So just to clarify for people, if, they, if they're not quite sure about that, um, Every prescription that you do and send through to EDSA goes through a validation process. Initially, uh, at the hands of uh, Victor, if you're based here in the UK, he will um, himself assess and check and vet all your prescriptions. Uh, whether or not you're a highly experienced clinician or not, we all make mistakes. We're all busy in clinic and, uh, and whatnot. So it's great to have that uh, extra layer uh, that Victor and EDSA provide. Uh, once the uh, and if there's any problems and you know Victor, I can say first hand Victor has contacted me time and time again and he will not uh, let up until he has the, the answer that he's looking for which is an also uh, a great asset you know, you know me it, it, it reduces <laughs> error you know, you, 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 the last thing you want is getting that device back and fitting it after a couple of weeks of waiting uh, and it's just not right so to have that extra tier and Victor and the, and then to do do pick up problems regularly I'll probably get expect two to three phone calls per week, at least maybe, plus a bunch of emails uh, over prescription questions. And I am I would consider myself as an experienced clinician. I still make mistakes. So uh, that, that that's an extra layer to have. And, and, and those prescriptions won't be put through to the lab for manufacturing until uh, everything looks good and as is. So the more information you give on your prescription writing form, uh, the better uh, we can all work together and, and make that decision, get your patient sorted uh, with minimum delay. Um, okay, let's flick on through. So, um, just as well for, for those of you that are not quite sure, I mean, um, UCBL is a, a really useful device. It's very, very uh, supportive. So those hyperpronated children where, you know, you've got sort of a calcaneal uh, varus and you've got the subtalar and the telenavicular angle is sort of leaning inwards. It's a really deep device to help to control and stabilize that deformity. Uh, and gate plates are for those children that either their feet turn in, so sort of pigeon-toed, we, we call that, or if they're turning it out a lot, after, a bit like Charlie Chaplin used to walk. Yeah, you know? so either if your feet are pointing in towards each other too much, or pointing yeah, away. Out out. Yeah. Into auto, but you know, like the different labs call into auto in a different way. For us, yeah. an into gate plate is to induce in toe, and an auto gate plate is to induce out toe. And that's yeah. something to come back because sometimes <laughs> labs they say, I want to have an auto gate, but it's to induce in toe. No, no. Into to induce in toe, out toe yeah. to induce out toe. We'll yeah. keep it simple, okay? Yeah, thanks for clarifying that because that, that, I'm, I'm constantly confused with that in different labs. Depending on which lab you're using, you've got to scratch your head and think for a minute. And that's not always a luxury in, in practice. Okay, so moving on to the foot beds, and, and the, the, these are really, really, really popular. Um, and uh, maybe um, not as popular as they were this year because I, I'm not sure as many shoe companies are still offering this type of NAOT style device. So 
talk us through that, guys. I mean, I used to use these a lot for hot hotter shoes, which we know very well in the UK. I'm not sure how well known they are in the US, if at all. We can work with any sandal that have a removable. That's that's the nature of the business. Um, we tend to have pre-approved models because it makes life very, very easy because we do all the CAD CAM integration. So Neot, Hotter, Mephisto send us the most popular family of footbeds because that's how they divide a lot of time their syringes. For example, this line of, of footbeds from Hotter is called Sicily. And Sicily has, the footbed is called Sicily and the footbed Sicily has different sandal models. So we CAD CAM everything so the only thing we have to do is replicate the shape of the footbed using the 3D scan that the patient sent us, okay? And we replicate, as you can see, the Velcros in the same position so they fit perfectly. Um, we can do as well job for sandals that we have never seen before, but that implies sending the sandal and the footbed to the factory because they had to do CAD CAM craftsman work only for that model of a sandal. So of course it's always easier when we work with um, with footbeds models that we have already approved. Now this it's popular, but at the same time, as you say, I mean, there is not that many um, sandals that do sandals with removables that are good for footbeds. It's quite a niche line, and it's important to have store availability because this is the thing. Um, in the past. People have done sandals already integrated with the footbed and they were sent directly to the clinician. But if the patient doesn't like it, the lab cleans his hands. Then what? You have a problem. So we like the patients going to the store and making the decision themselves. But we need to help them find a store that sells the right Mephisto or hotter sandal footwear. Otherwise, they can work with the internet. Uh, and, and these work great clinically, you know, when you fit these in for your patient, that they look awesome. I just um, wish more um, companies made them with the removable footbeds because there's a, a, a bigger and bigger need for, for orthotics across the world, I'm sure, as um, you know, as, as we move forward. But um, for whatever reason, the manufacturers of footwear uh, don't seem see it uh, as important, perhaps, as it was a few years ago. So... It's sad, but if we can get them, get the nail, the right style sandals to, to, to um, accommodate these footbeds, then you have an absolutely awesome result. The patient's happy that they're wearing the type of foot there that they like and in the spring and summer months. And also they're getting all the biomechanical benefit uh, from their orthotic at the same time. Uh, so still, you can find them. It's not completely gone. But um, you, not you, always the, you always need to be, and uh, this is a quick tip for the clinicians, Whatever prescription you have in mind for the orthotics in the shoe, you have to be slightly more moderate with the sandal because you don't have the amount of control of a closed shoe. So it's orthotic therapy. It's better to start with a lower degree of correction that you might apply to the orthotic inside the shoe. How about stateside, Jameson? Is it, is it um, uh, easy to get this style of sandal? Um, there's not so much of Nayot anymore. Um, Revere is a bit bigger here. I believe they're out of Australia. Um, okay. And uh, there's a company from New Balance, I forget the name of it, that has them also. Um, and we work some with those. Okay. Yep. Um, do you want a bead to kind of scroll down and give me like 10 or 15 seconds on each one? Hopefully I can be on my toes. Okay. We'll start, start with the E flops real quick. Um, yeah, you want me to? Well, yeah, we can. Because uh, I think the rest of this is stuff we'll touch on in the future. Yeah, uh, I think. Okay, this this is a promise. Okay, flop totics and E flops. Okay. Yep. I am going to make two specialized videos from the factory. Hopefully, Abit will be with me. They're gonna be quality, and I'm just gonna go through all the factory, all the materials. I am going to check to 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 scan. To, to, to film different feet, how to use the sizer. It's a very, very, it's a video that we owe for a long time to our customers. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna do it this summer and it's gonna be great, okay? So okay. you can jump to the FOS directly because I'm gonna make two very, very nice videos okay. on July from the factory okay. explaining everything. Yeah. yeah, really important for the guys to, to, to see how that works. And it's, you have to wear a slightly different hat to prescribe them. 
Just, so that, that's going to be fun and exciting. We'll, we'll come yeah. back to that. Yeah. So here, here's the AFOs for you, Jameson. Is that a... Yeah. Um, so the AFOs are our, our newest 3D printed line that started a couple of years ago. Um, and these are for what kind of patient would you think these are necessary for? Um, so, drop uh, foot. It really depends on the brace, but I'll, I'll run through them uh, a little bit quickly. So the Miami and the Barcelona are drop foot braces. Um, so your, your patient um, who has uh, limitations in, in active dorsiflexion um, to clear their toes while walking is going gonna, is gonna to need those. They're both dynamic, so they're not uh, fixed in a rigid position, but they're going to uh, encourage dorsiflexion um, without – uh, limiting any plantar flexion at all. So it's dynamic in that it's going to, uh, it should help muscle recovery and muscle growth. Um, the Jerusalem is a, is a solid DAFO. Um, those are used uh, largely in um, patients with cerebral palsy um, in, in pediatric cases. Um, the Charleston is a, uh, a, a ver our version of a balance brace. So those are going to be in fall risk patients typically. Um, the Malta is is a UCBL or uh, a true UCBL or a uh, low supramalleolar orthosis. Um, and that's going to be for patients largely with uh, posterior tibial tendon dysfunction um, or patients similar to what you would use that the EDSER standard UCBL for um, with severe flat foot and pronation uh, issues. Um, the Oslo is our supramalleolar orthosis, which is going to be similar. The Malta was kind of designed for patients that can't tolerate it coming up and over their malleoli. So we made a, a short version for them. The London is your solid AFO. So any ankle stability, instability, really, we can do it full length for patients with um, drop foot as well. Um, we don't do a gauntlet, but if you were thinking of, of a gauntlet type brace, the London would probably be your alternative if you're going to do it with us. Um, the Tel Aviv is similar to the Jerusalem, except it's uh, a jointed DAFO. Um, so it's going to allow more freedom of plantar and dorsiflexion. And the New York is a, a Richie style brace. Um, again, for your patients uh, with posterior tibial tendon dysfunction, largely um, other flat foot deformities. And this one has uh, a free hinge um, that can also, we can limit the number of degrees of plantar and dorsiflexion in that brace. I think we do have a, a program planned on this, uh, Jameson, to, to go through the, the, the whole range uh, and yeah. how to describe it and looking at the materials and, you know, all the different benefits. So uh, there's a lot more to come on that one. Yep. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about that. No, the these are just two two or newer items, um, less less podiatry related, um, more sport and, uh, and O&P, but uh, protective masks for... Um, nose or facial conditions um, for return to sport when the, the patient is still at risk uh, and shin guards for soccer players that can also be for um, field hockey adaptable to uh, baseball for uh, batters on their, on their lead leg, looking not to have their shin hit by foul balls. Um, so those are two, two newer concepts that we've, we've come up with. Um, then you kind of after that have we'll go through more specifically and talk about the um, possibilities for 3D printing. Um, the, more about uh, PA12 and what the material is and what FitFoot 360 and uh, additive manufacturing allow us to do. Um, you could probably skip over the next few, which are some of the materials that we mentioned for the shells. Yeah, we'll go in that and. Uh... There's the polypropylene, but you know, we'll, we've got future programs to help guys uh, understand the material science behind it a little bit more. Uh, but there's your exciting fi fiber range, blue, silver, and graphite, really cool materials, uh, which we'll show uh, the viewers in the very near future. Here's uh, a list of all the different type of uh, base materials and, and plasters out they had mostly for the diabetic guys, I suppose. Uh, here's some of the, the liners and the different types of Covers uh, uh, Victor showed you a swatch of. Here's it, some of the sample yep. examples of that. Yeah, the, the, the swatch is, is people love it. You know what I mean? Because we have um, all the leathers. You have Italian genuine leather, um, synthetic leathers that look like genuine leather, the camel novels, the neoprene, DVAs, and we're always on the research. Because when I when I started, for example, with Edser, 
five years ago, the booklets were half of the size that they are now. That, mean, that means that we're constantly investing in new top covers, new EVAs. So the fact that in five years, we actually multiply the size of, um, of, the, of, the, of the booklet shows you the kind of company we are, you know, like that we're really always trying to expand, not reduce the possibilities. And also it's a, it's, it's a sign of respect to an appreciation to the factory because um, having in stock everything all the time um, is complicated. You know, they, they really do their best because suppliers, they can have shortages as well, especially in a full pandemic, they're human beings, you know, like, and we're really, really always trying to not to miss any top cover within our portfolio. Yeah. So uh, okay. I, Sorry. I think this, I think this last part is something that uh, Abid actually, it's coming to my mind that we should probably, before we get into the prescribing for specific um, diagnoses or uh, patient presentations, uh, we'll probably go through together, you and I, with uh, the modifications and accommodations that are available for the orthotics, which goes back to the casual uh, dress and performance lines and what the, the different heel cup depths, um, arch contacts and grinds, and then the patient diagnosis uh, specific accommodations and modifications that are available so that the um, those watching clinicians that are that are looking to learn a little bit about it understand that before we start throwing the different ones at them based on yeah. the specific condition next next video um, uh, it will be me with Abit because uh, okay. I want to do um, an app training demo from uh, more from an administration point of view about client templates, Perfect. Uh, you know, like product template, and that will be good because I will be able to 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 cover that part, so you can get into more technical specifications later. Okay. Awesome. We got we got a lot lot of work to do. It's going yeah. to be really exciting and fun. We're going to open up the game, I think, to uh, uh, experienced uh, clinicians prescribing, and also to anybody new out there that's trying to come into it. We're going to make things real easy and simple and straightforward, and hopefully could create some you know useful international resources uh, material and information that anybody in, around the world can use ultimately. Uh, so ju just to maybe wrap it up for today, because I think that was a, an awesome problem. There's so much information just in that hour we've spent. Uh, we've talked about uh, the, the, a little bit of background about Edster and the company. We've talked about um, what makes them good and one of the best in the world with regards to their technology range. We've looked at the products as well. We've looked at their uh, orthotics and orthoses. We've looked at the uh, diabetic range. We've looked at the... Um, uniquely available uh, e-flops, flopthotics, uh, and sandals that they can do also. One thing I'm just conscious we haven't touched on, guys, and maybe for another program, is um, the Edsa sock range, because that's also quite quite, quite relevant, I think. It's quite you like yeah. Phineasology socks? Yeah, the okay. socks. We'll, we'll yeah. probably need to talk about that at some point for the guys, because I think there's... We, we, it, it will be good to have Sergio for that one, possibly. Oh, yeah. even better, even better. Got the, the man himself for it. That would yeah. be even better, so. Um, so yeah, maybe I think we've done about an hour there, uh, guys. Yes, we did. Just wrap up the program for the evening, maybe Victor. And, Victor, uh, the one with Sergio is going to be pay per view. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Canal Plus, yes. <laughs> Good. But the Good. main man himself, that will be fun. Yeah. All right. A lot, lot to share with us uh, and his audience. Uh, nice, nice, nice see you again, lads, and uh, we'll see you again in the next video. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the, the, the show and uh, I look forward to seeing you again uh, this time uh, next week. Uh, and after, I think we've got a couple more pre recorded programs and, and then we're going to unleash ourselves on the world uh, by going live. Definitely. There you go. Perfect. What okay. Have you? It's coming soon. All right. Cheers. All right. See ya. Cheers. Take care. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye -bye.